Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this children's address for the 23rd Sunday after Pentecost. It's also Veterans Day weekend, uh, so we're thinking a little bit about the soldiers and their service uh, over the years too. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about being ready, being ready. And that's because the gospel today is about being ready. And I'm just going to read you uh, the gospel before we start. <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten maidens who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. And the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those maidens arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterwards, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open the door to us. But he answered and said, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch, therefore, says Jesus, for you do not know the day or the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. The Gospel of the Lord. So, being ready, um, I wonder what kind of things you get ready for in your lives week to week. I guess you have to get ready for school, um, even if that's virtual. Um, no doubt you have homework to do, some of you. Um, you get ready in the morning, you get up and get dressed, um, and you have to be ready for everything that is coming up in your day, don't you? Well, when I was a, a chaplain in the army for 20 years, we had to be ready too sometimes. And I remember being with uh, an organization called 16 Air Assault Brigade. And they were a very high readiness unit, which meant they had to be ready to go at a moment's notice. And in that unit at times, <clears throat> we had people who were literally on four hours notice to move, which meant you know, they had to be ready to literally get on a plane and go anywhere in the world. And so they sat in a room, all dressed and ready with their kit packed <clears throat> in a Bergen, like this, <clears throat> and uh, they would literally just pick up the the bergen and their weapon, and they would be they would off they would go. Most of us were not on that kind of short notice, uh, but I was sometimes on seven days' notice to move, which meant I had to be ready to go in a week, um, and sometimes even a little bit shorter than that. So we had all our kit packed away a lot of the time, and uh, so that we were ready. And in this this bag has everything. Uh, that I would need to survive for six months, apart from food and water, which would obviously be supplied um, when we were there. Um, so um, we have uh, in here, I've got, let me see what I've got. <clears throat> this bag's not completely, not really ready at all. I mean, I, there's lots of things that would be in here that are not at the moment, because this is stored away for long-term storage. But, you know, I have a torch, and I have uh, a pair of goggles, if you can see that, so that if we go to a dusty place, um, we can keep the dust out of our eyes. Because one of the things about being ready is you don't know, often know what you have to be ready for. You could be going anywhere in the world. You could be going to a desert or to a frozen uh, snowy place. You just don't know. So we have that, and then, of course, wherever you go, you need to be able to uh, drink water. So we have, uh, this is called a camel pack, and it, it will be full of water, um, and it will just be stuck in the, in, in the garden here. So I could always have a drink of water uh, when I was traveling and moving. And then, whenever you get to where you're going for the first time, 
you need to be able to, to sleep. And sometimes you, you have to sleep out in, in the open and things like that. So I would carry a, a sleeping bag. And I would also carry... Uh, where is it? Yeah, here we are. Uh, this is called a bivy bag. And really, it's just a big waterproof, uh, waterproof bag with a zip down the front of it. And you put the sleeping bag in there. Um, and you can sleep out in the rain and still be dry, um, just about anyway. It's, uh, you, you, you would rather not do that unless you had to, but, you, but it would work. And then also, um, we have here, uh, this is called a poncho. And it's just a big waterproof sheet with some tent pegs and some line. And you can make a little makeshift tent with it. So it's just a, just a shelter. So you can put that up. Uh, and that combined with your bivy bag and your sleeping bag, you can be both warm and dry. Um, and underneath, because sometimes the ground can be very hard, um, I had a couple of pieces of, of uh, felt or uh, foam, which you could put underneath you, and, and at least you wouldn't be lying completely on rocks or hard ground. So within this bag, everything I needed was ready to sleep anywhere out in the open if, if, if needed. Um, we also uh, carry a mug, <laughs> of course, so you can always have a cup of tea. And then in the side pocket, this one, this one, there would be everything I need to cook. So there's a little gas burner, uh, a little uh, thing I could heat water in. I uh, also carried a little um, uh, tool which you know had in it uh, turned into a pair of pliers and um, has a knife in it, a screwdriver and all those kind of things. I've actually got a bigger one than this uh, but this is the one that's in the burger at the moment. And uh, what else have we got in here? Yeah. that in a minute. And here we have uh, mess tins, they're called, um, and they're you know, two things to cook on, and inside here is uh, some solid fuel. They, you, these burn very hot, and so you can use them to cook with. So um, in the burger, I've got everything I need uh, to, to cook with and, and feed myself. Um, and also, um, we would carry 24 hours worth of rations, and those would be in plastic bags, three meals in plastic bags, and various other things, tea and coffee, and, and all the things that you would need to eat for 24 hours. Um, I don't have any more of those now, because I haven't been in the army for over four years, and they're, they're all gone, but they would get issued with those. Um, and then, uh, within these bags, um, I would have a wash kit, uh, so I could wash myself, some soap, some, uh, a little bit of shampoo, uh, and insect repellent, things like that, um, and some shaving gel, that's shaving gel, and a razor. Um, also, I've got some thread and a needle in case I, you know, have to fix uh, a button or my uniform is broke, uh, torn in some way, uh, and shaving oil, uh, insect repellent, as I say. So you'd have everything you need to wash yourself and keep yourself clean. Um, and then also, um, I would have a first aid kit. So um, I have here a, a first field dressing, which you know, can be put on any injury or wound that you have. I have here what's called a tourniquet. So if, uh, if you damaged one of your limbs or one of your friends was, was, was bleeding badly from a limb, you can put that around um, and twist it, and you can stop the blood uh, um, going out of the body that way. So. Um, First aid kit, and then various other things, plasters, and um, whatever you you know whatever you need just to deal with an injury if you if you get one. So we've got that, uh, and then of course on this side, um, because I'm a chaplain, I had to go ready to have a service anywhere that we went. So I would sometimes have services uh, out in a field in a wood. Um, I wouldn't have an altar like the one behind me. I might just have a tree stump or the tailgate of a, of a Land Rover. 
um, or somewhere where I could, could have a little flat space um, and I could put uh, what, what I needed for the service on it. And in this, in this, in this bag, you see I've got a little wine for uh, the communion. Um, I've got a little a cloth I could spread over a table uh, to keep the vessels clean. Um, in there we've got some uh, white linen and also a silver uh, a silver box, really, which has got the, the, uh, uh, we keep bread and things for the Eucharist, for the communion. And in here, uh, there's, you can see the breads there, and uh, some tissues to clean the vessels as well with afterwards. Um, and uh, I also carry um, this prayer book in a leather pouch. And in this prayer book, we have um, not just the prayer book, uh, but also the Bible. Uh, so everything I need uh, to say my prayers each day um, and to, to lead the services are all in this one little book. Um, that's all you really need, the Bible and the prayer book. If you have that as an Episcopalian, uh, you've got everything really that you need. So... Um, I think that's it. I've got some service sheets and things as well, ready to hand out for people uh, when they are there. And even a couple of little candles uh, to light and put on the altar, or the tree stump, or whatever it is. <laughs> so you can see um, it's possible to be ready pretty much for anything. If you think about it in advance, and if you gather the stuff together, make sure it all works, put it all, pack it all away, um, and then, you know, the, the, the word comes and you just pick up this bag and you go. And you can go anywhere in the world and do anything that, uh, that the army needs you to do. Now, thinking about that uh, story in the, in, the, in the gospel this morning about the, th the wise maidens and the foolish maidens, um, that is a reminder to us that as Christians, we need to be ready. And the most important thing we need to be ready for is God. So we need to make sure that we're ready for the time when Jesus comes. And Jesus comes when he comes. And, and uh, we just don't know when that's going to be, but he's going to come. And so to have um, our things, our lives ready for him is really important. And how do you do that as a Christian? Well, um, you don't, uh, you have to do things in advance, don't you? I mean, if, if you have an exam at school or a test, uh, there's no point trying to prepare for the test on the day of the test. You have to prepare for it uh, in, the, in the days and weeks beforehand so that you're ready. Um, and in the same way, um, as a Christian, we have to train to be ready. So that's why you have Sunday school. You are training, you are learning about God, learning about the scriptures, about the sacraments, um, and you're getting ready through that, uh, through that training you get at Sunday school. Um, and also we uh, prepare as Christians by coming to church when we can. Obviously, at the moment, uh, it's uh, with the virus and things, it's difficult to do a lot of things. We have some people coming to church in person, but we also have the, the services online, like uh, this address is online. So, but we, we prepare ourselves by worshipping by worshipping God each week. And uh, when we can, we worship prepare by making our communion, having the bread and wine of the Eucharist each week too, because that is the food for our souls, so help our souls grow strong and healthy. Um, just as our bodies would, um, wouldn't do very well if we didn't have any food or water, so our souls don't do very well if we don't have the spiritual food that the church gives us in the body and blood of Jesus. In the, in the elements of the, the Eucharist. So we prepare in that way. We also listen to sermons and addresses like this, um, and we um, say our prayers. You know, I, hope, uh, I hope you say your prayers every night when you go to bed. Um, and I remember the prayers that I was taught by my parents when I was very, very young. Um, one of them was, this night when I lie down to sleep, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. God bless mummy, God bless daddy, and, and, and all the rest. Um, and prayer is so important. It doesn't have to be clever. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It's really just talking to God. 
But talking to God is really important and saying thank you to him for all the good things that we have and asking him for uh, his help for the people that we love and for ourselves. So pr we talk to God each night and, and by doing so, we uh, make a friendship with God. We build up a friendship with God. And like any friendship, you know, that takes a little bit of time. It takes time to build the friendship with God. So we do that um, in advance, if you like, so that when the time comes that we really need God, uh, we already know him and we already know how he is and, and what, how, how much he loves us and how much he cares for us. So that's what today's uh, uh, readings are about. It's about being ready. So I hope that uh, you are ready and I hope that you are, or at least making yourself ready. I hope you're saying your prayers. I hope you're enjoying Sunday school and the teaching that we do there. Um, and I hope uh, when you can, you enjoy coming to church either virtually um, or in person. So God bless you this Sunday. Um, and uh, we remember and give thanks for uh, all the soldiers and sailors and airmen and all those who have served uh, our country down the years today in, in, on Veterans Day weekend. Um, and we might just close with a little prayer, if we may. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Veterans Day weekend, we pray for all who have served our country in many different, in many different ways. We pray for the soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the armed forces and the Coast Guard, and for all those who serve our country. We pray for one another and for all those who are doing so much of their lives in school and talking to friends uh, through Zoom and through, uh, through the internet. We pray for all those who are suffering from this uh, terrible virus. And we pray for all those who are working to find a, a vaccine and a cure for it. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. And I'll just pack my bag up now and make it ready again. All right. God bless you.